So what I'm going to do now is open the floor to um, hand over the baton to Helen initially. Um, and uh, Helen is uh, Helen is one of our select members, as is as is Stu. And Helen's built her own really great culture, her, her unique culture, I think, probably uh, within within Ada. And you know, I'd love Helen to be able to share with us all some of the things that, that, that her views really on the importance of team uh, and culture and understanding each other. So, Helen, over to you. I'll stop. Right. I'll stop. Right, everybody, I'm a, <laughs> but I am definitely a monkey, anybody that, weirdly, I'm a monkey with owl skills, that's the way Mel describes me, because I'm very logical and methodical. Uh, yeah, so, um, as those of you who don't know me, um, at a bookkeeping, I've been a bookkeeper for 16 years, but four years ago, I decided to expand and take on premises, and I've gone from just me to seven staff in four years, we're just relocating to our third premises and I've increased my turnover uh, by a multiple of 10. So we've had very fast growth and I've had to learn about being a manager and a leader of people, which I really, really enjoy. So I'm going to pick out some of the highlights of, of uh, Ada Bookkeeping. And I, I can quite say this without being very, it sounds like I'm being not very modest, but my staff are so happy the morale is fantastic. They keep putting me in for Employer of the Year at the National Bookkeeping Awards. I'm up for it again this year. Um, so how have I done that? Well, I've actually, I'm naturally, um, as I said, a monkey. So I'm very empathising and, and very warm and very people focused, which helps. But I have actually carried out this DIS profile on all my staff. Uh, we use the animal one, but we've, we've got, um, um, two monkeys, two dolphins and three owls. So we haven't got any panthers. And we use that to actually, we discussed it all after we did it. And it's created a whole um, bit of humor in the office because the monkeys, which is me and my mini me, Rachel, uh, who were very excitable and loud and fast paced. Um, the dolphins are all saying, for goodness sake, calm down. Uh, my, my special dolphin, Lisa, is we call her the rock and we call her the handbrake because I go off on one and then I go, right, Lisa, you need to calm me down and make me think about this quietly. So we use all that. Um, Penny, who's an owl and is quite reserved, will we'll go, will you monkeys just be quiet a moment? So we use this whole animal thing quite a lot. So that's important to me. I'm going to come back to that in a minute with something that I learned when we got flooded last week about members of my staff. So... One of the main things that I do, which not all leaders do, is I completely involve my team in everything that's going on in the business. So we have a quarterly, they know exactly what my turnover and profit is. They know what I'm aiming it to be. They see all the measurements of new clients that we've had. We discuss it all. We have a quarterly um, meeting where we set projects. Anybody can come up with the idea of a project we look at them all and we allocate them to different people and then they're given ownership of those projects. So I'm not running them all. And then once a month, they can report back to me on how they're getting on on those projects. So we do like to give people ownership. We, we got a new starter in September, Tom. Um, that's created a whole lot of humour on its own because we're all over 40 and Tom's 26. So we have a lot of humour about things that, oh, we all started going last week. Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> Anyone that's over 50, he's like, what are you doing? I'm like, faulty towers. So we've got a whole lot of humour based around the difference in our ages, actually. Um, sorry, I digress. So something that happened last week, which I actually thought was a good example. When we had this flood, um, we had no electric for a whole day and we couldn't do anything. So we told our clients what, that, that, we had, that we were completely offline for a, for a day. And I decided to turn that into an opportunity to have a big six hour staff uh, brainstorm on our sales and onboarding processes. I recently read a book, um, which I love, which gave me a ton of ideas and they're all floating around in my head. So we actually mapped out all my ideas and had a good discussion about how they would fit with us Everybody contributed. 
I changed some things I'd thought about when I listened to other people's opinions. And we allocated all little bits of the project to different members. Uh, so Tom, the new guy, is going to plan it all out on a flow chart. Somebody else is going to uh, make the script for our new discovery calls. So we've they share everything. And that involvement um, makes, they know where I'm at and where I'm going and what I want to be. Two of my staff have already said they want to buy business off me when I retire in that, say, seven, eight years time. That leads me on to this sales and onboarding process. So we've decided there'll be a 10, 15 minute discovery call, which will be scripted. And that will lead on to a full proposal meeting. And Lisa, who's my very quiet dolphin, very um, softly spoken and reserved, uh, said she would be up for doing that. And I was really quite surprised. I knew that Rachel the monkey would, and I knew that my new guy Tom would, but um, Lisa said, no, I, it, it's taken me out of my comfort zone, but I want to have a go at it. So I want to do a couple with you and I want to learn from it. So I'm going to empower her to do that. And um, one of the things about empowering people to do other things is I keep my eye on my big hairy goal, as Mel calls it. So my big hairy goal is to have a saleable business. And to do that, it mustn't be reliant on me. So I, I mustn't be the bottleneck. At the moment, we've been so busy the last few months that I, I've created my own bottleneck because I'm the only one dealing with new clients. So out of this um, huge meeting when we got flooded last week, we've, we, we've um, decided who, and it was all of them, believe it or not, other than one who was on holiday, who, who I know wouldn't do it because she's very shy. And we, we've um, decided that they'll all be empowered to all start having a go at these things. So there's no longer a bottleneck and I'm not the only one that can do it. Fantastic. So I'm all about, sorry, Kev, have I gone on too long? Uh, that's about the five minutes, but that, that's brilliant. Okay, okay that's no, that's right. fine. I right. was just going to say one other thing. I wanted to thank somebody who told me to read the One Minute Monkey, One Minute Manager Meets the Monkey last time. They might not be here. We've okay. you, we used that a lot as well. So I could go on for hours, but yeah, hopefully that's given you a bit of an insight. Yeah, really good, really good insight. Thank you. Thank you, Helen. So yeah, so good, good insights as to how, how Helen's using DISC, how they're actually using it as a kind of almost a language now, you know, it, it helps them when, uh, when they want to yeah, have a bit of a dig at somebody or just def deflect a, a, what could be a conflict, um, because you can just refer back to the animals or, or, or whatever style that that, that, that might be. Uh, and great that you've overcome some adversity with um, some good, good stuff. You overcome the flooding, overcame the flooding and uh, you've made some good out of that, which is, which is brilliant.